Well, I'm down at the Manx Legion Hall and it's time for another PAG meeting. Uh, this time, the gentleman I know very well, Mr Ron Berry, he's going to be talking. Uh, in fact, I did one this last, last year about local news and everything, and, and this is the sort of same sort of ilk because it's, you're talking about public service broadcasting and its future in the Isle of Man. You've got an idea about this. Uh, what are you going to tell people? Well, I, I was um, able to put together a discussion document um, uh, around about, well, the back end of last year, uh, on the back of a, um, a conversation that I had with Anthony Pugh at Max Radio. Um, there was a report published by Treasury in July last year that looked at um, the future of Max Radio and public service broadcasting um, and the position that Max Radio had. And um, it was uh, during a Sunday opinion programme that um, David North and Anthony Pugh were, were talking about uh, public service broadcasting and funding. Uh, and I threw an open invitation to talk to Anthony about it. And we subsequently met and uh, I've formed a discussion document on the back of those discussions, um, which has been presented to the board of Manx Radio, but has also been presented to some of the members of Timwald and then was put forward to the Department of Economic Development. So what people are seeing tonight is, is that sort of thing, is it you, at the PowerPoint you gave them and, and your yeah. future on the yeah. broadcasting Isle of Man? But as far as the Isle of Man is concerned, you know, I mean, what I do make uh, very clear in the presentation is that we have a broadcasting history on the Isle of Man that we should be very, very proud of. Um, if you look at public service broadcasting and, and uh, the, the government's involvement with that over the years, you can take it right back, and certainly with radio terms, to 1960, when um, you know, the Isle of Man government um, went forward to the UK government to try and get a license to site a radio station on the Isle of Man that would be able to broadcast to the, um, to the whole of the UK. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen, and there was a, a quite, quite a long fight up until about 1964 when a license was eventually granted uh, under the post office. Um, and from there, Manx Radio's beginnings of a caravan up on Honkin Head uh, have obviously grown. Um, but I, I've looked at that, and that's a, that's a history that we need to preserve. But today's a different world, you know, we're living in 2013, it's different altogether. Exactly, I was going to say, I think it's Radio Luxembourg, which is an institution, it's gone, it's had its day, it's finished. I mean, things are moving on in a vast rate. I mean, UK radio stations come and go and, and get taken over all the time. Do you want to take over Manx Radio? Is that no, what you're, you're looking no, at? No, no, no. This, th this is a bit of a misconception, right? Okay. On the back of those conversations that I had with Manx Radio, I said, look, is there a better way? Is there a better way of being able to deliver public service broadcasting and broadcasting in general? You know, when you look at the definition of public service broadcasting as it's defined within the Act, it is a source of news, current affairs, entertainment and education for the whole of the population. So when you take that in context, you can say, OK, now we have not just three radio stations on the Isle of Man, we have lots of other publications, you know, printed publications, but the social media and the internet has changed the face of how radio works, not just on the Isle of Man, but right across the world. So is there a better way for us on the Isle of Man to move forward for the future of broadcasting so that we can secure, if you like, our, local, our localness? Because it's not just the radio stations on the Isle of Man that are facing problems. It's radio stations throughout, well, throughout the world, but certainly throughout the UK. And if you, as I say in my presentation, you know, if you take into consideration you've got iTunes, you've got Spotify, you've got Last FM, you've got all these different um, forms of, of, of online and internet, uh, internet media, plus thousands upon thousands of, of radio stations, the choice is infinite. However, what makes local local is its local it, it, it's its localness people might say though you've got a vested interest you you own a radio station you, you've also done a, a deal with energy to to work together and share facilities and you know if you get manx rodeo out of the out of the advertising game then you, you're, you've got a lot to to win on this it's not a question of getting manx radio out of the advertising game it's a question of saying right okay public money goes into manx radio into public service broadcasting are we using that in the best way are we using that funding in the best way to be able to 
deliver a service to the island that could be, um, uh, if you like, a Manx Broadcasting Corporation, um, if we came together. Um, and if we came together under that sort of NBC banner, you're effectively talking about a sort of a Radio 1, Radio 2, Radio 4 type format for our nation, for our Isle of Man. So, it, it, you know, we found with regard to our association with energy, we've been able to pull certain resources in certain ways so you become much more cost effective. Um, there's no reason why we couldn't extend that into Manx Radio. You presented this to the board, uh, how did it go down? Well initially, you know, when I first presented it to, uh, to Anthony Pugh, um, he was very positive, um, very positive indeed. Uh, and then I was, I was called into a fairly rushed board meeting uh, at Manx Radio and presented it to, to them again. And I think they saw a lot of merit in what I was saying. Um, I'm not quite sure that it was the way perhaps that they saw things happening. You're sounding very diplomatic here, Mr Berry. It, it didn't go down that well. I mean, they, they don't want to, to take it on board as it stands on this. You know, would that be no, fair to well, they, they didn't say one way or the other. I mean, they quite simply said, look, if we don't take this up, where will you stand? Which is a fair question. And, and if it isn't taken up, 3FM stands where 3FM stands. It, you know, we don't, we don't need to do this as a station. This is not something that we're, um, you, you know, we're, we're, we're fighting to, to have a must do. We'll just carry on and, uh, and we do very well. So it's not a problem for 3FM. Um, it's just to say, OK, is, whilst broadcasting is under, under scrutiny, let's have a look and see if there's a better way to deliver local broadcasting to the island. Because I mean, I mean, there is obviously this this thing. You're do, you're doing your own TV. There's there's the, your radio services. There's Manx Radio. There's the newspapers. There's countless other publications. I mean, there's a fairly good amount of media on the Isle of Man, is there not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're very well served for media here. Uh, I mean, when you look at our population size of what, 83, 85,000, um, when you actually look at the Rajar survey area, which is the Radio Research Authority, when you look at their area, they survey 71,000 people. Um, radio listening, local radio listening here, both for Manx Radio and for 3FM, is very high. Uh, I can't speak for energy because they're not in Rajar uh, as, as it's stands at the moment. But we know that the kind of figures that Rajar delivers for both of those stations in radio terms is, ex is exceptional. Well, we'll continue talking with Ron in our next section.